He loved to dance and he loved this type of music. It was the music of his youth. He even tried as a young man to learn to play the violin and he bought an inexpensive violin for $1.50 and learned to play it a little bit. But he um, never mastered it quite as well as he would have liked. In the 1920s, uh, when he's a very successful industrialist and he's beginning to um, get more in touch with uh, things that mean a lot to him in uh, terms of reviving the American past. And along with that, he wants to uh, fiddle again. So he's the wealthiest man in the world and he can afford the most expensive rare violins. So he uh, contacts a friend of his, Rudolf Wurlitzer, who is in the um, music business and sells antique uh, violins. And uh, Mr. Wurlitzer presents Henry with a lot of violins to look at and select from. In the end, by uh, 1925, he had acquired a group of seven classical violins made by famous masters like Antonio Stradivari, Guarneri del Gesù, and he would uh, begin to play them a lot again. In 2012, we were approached by uh, the um, organization uh, Sphinx, which encourages uh, minorities in the uh, classical musical. And they asked us if perhaps we could lend a violin to uh, one of their artists who was going to play a, with a local symphony, the Ypsilanti Symphony Orchestra. And of course, we said yes, because we knew that's what Henry would have wanted. Soon these violins will be out on exhibit on the museum floor in a case and uh, they will be able to be seen and examined by people coming to the museum. But that's not all. We lend them out. Uh, they have been on exhibit in other places and um, we look for special opportunities to have them played out in the community. So when we have an opportunity to hear someone like Gareth pick the instrument up, and make it sing. It's extraordinary. He is incredibly talented and for um, a curator who's dealt with these over the last 20 years, it's always so wonderful to hear the sound that they make because it is extraordinary.